Okay, we're going to install um, RS Logix 5000 version 19. Uh, like I said, you don't have to have this to do the training we're doing uh, and run these the soft PLC. It is strictly for the newer. If you want to buy a newer compact Logix or newer control Logix, like an L70 series of processor, you'll need version 19 to program it. Um, but if you're not going to do that, you don't need to install this. But we'll go ahead and walk through and show how to install 19. And uh, how you just, once you install 17, you install 19, 20, 21, all the way up to 30. You just keep installing it on top of each other. And the program gives you a choice of what version you want to program in. You can never program, uh, you can't write a program in 19 and download it into like this SoftLogix version 17 it'll tell you it's not compatible uh, but I can take a version 19 uh, soft logics or a version 16 RS logics and I can download that into 17 I can go below the revision but I can't go above the revision so uh, let's take a look at this real quick and look at the processors we'll start RS logics 5000 you'll see it's version 17 right now Okay, on a note, uh, the SoftLogic monitor doesn't have to be this big. See this little arrow right here? This is hide slots 9 through 16. You can do that, and then you can even make it tighter. See where it says your computer? You don't really care about your computer, so you can just go view, compact, and this makes this really compact right here. Um, anyway, let's click on our demo program right here. Um, well, we can say new project. Let's click on new project and we'll just make up something. But what I want to show you is what processors are supported. Um, as we come through here, all these compact logics are supported. So you get your 5300 series, your 5500, uh, 5300, I'm sorry, uh, compact logics. Uh, the 5500 series uh, control logics, the 5565. Now, the 5555, you need version 15 to program that. So, you're going to have to get better than a 5555. You're going to have to get at least a 5565 and up. And as you see, we're going to go 55, 61, safeties. And then we're going up to 5561 here and our L60. So this is like an L62, L61, L63, oops, let me come up here, L65, L64. Uh, so these are the 60 series is all we can program. So when we install 19, we'll be able to program the L70 series processors. So let's cancel this, close this out, and let's click on RS Logics. This is misspelled. Let me respell here. RS Logics 5000 V19. And again, now we don't have to go to our activation disk because we've already activated. Uh, when we install this over top of 17, it'll see the serial number and the activation that was already put in there. Now at the end of the install, we do have to click on activate with master disk and then hit cancel because we're not going to copy any files over and it'll activate itself then. So you just go to setup exec right here, United States, continue. And we go next. Serial number is already in there because it's already been installed already. We're just upgrading. Next. Accept the license agreement. Next. Default directory. Accept it. Next. We want to check all of our programs to be installed. Next. 
um, we'll take off the combination generator and we'll add this translation tool, this newer translation tool. Next. Accept that. Next. Motion wear for 19. Next. And then install. Okay, it's going to install uh, Adobe 9.33. Uh, it does this automatically. Um, if you want to upgrade this, uh, you can go to uh, our website and download Acrobat Reader 10 and upgrade it to 10. Uh, after that, you'll go to, um, well, it's Adobe Reader 10. After that, you can go to Acrobat Reader. You don't have to upgrade. You can just go on up to uh, Acrobat Reader and install Acrobat Reader. Um, it has, I think it has problems running in XP. As long as you got your .NET 4 and .35 uh, Acrobat Reader, I think it's 10 something, will run. But I just use Adobe Reader 10. Nine works fine. Works fine with any files we have here, as far as uh, information, uh, user guides. Um, programming guides uh, this Adobe Reader 9 will be fine to read all those okay finish now to go ahead and start installing And this is just going to update um, what hasn't been updated so far. Our enterprise tools are already on there. Uh, the enterprise setup, we won't run that this time because it's already installed with the function block and um, the sequential function chart and the structured text has already been installed. We're just upgrading the programming language. Okay, so now we've upgraded the, the programming uh, modules. This will allow us to program the newer processors, the L70 series processors. And we'll see that in a minute when we start it up. Um, this is version 19. Uh, most companies today aren't using the latest and greatest. The latest and greatest would be Studio 5000. And Studio 5000 is, uh, I believe, um, 23 or 25 and up is Studio 5000. Everything else is called RS Logix 5000. And they look exact. When you open up the program, the PLCs, the program software looks exactly the same. 
it's a little sleeker interface on the Studio 5000, but the structure, how the Explorer looks, uh, how the program windows look, the menus, everything looks exactly the same. So once you learn to program in this, you learn how to program in all of them. They're all exactly the same. They look exactly the same too. So anyway, we want to activate products using master disk, not factor shock activation. This is wrong. We want to use a master disk. It's very important. And you hit finish, and it'll try to copy over again, and we just hit cancel because it's already on the drive. And now it'll be activated. So now if we start RS Logix 5000 right here, we'll see we got 17 and 19. If I added 20 or 21, and it, it would show all the versions I've installed. Okay. Um, most big companies are only working with 20 or 21 uh, because they have so many processors scattered out all over the place. Everybody doesn't jump up to the latest and greatest. Uh, so they're programming in version 20. Even though you got a newer processor, they're progr programming in a lower version of the programming software. And typically, it's going to be 20 or 21 is used the most. Okay, so let's hit new project again. And now, when we look at our processors, we'll see we've got newer compact logics. We got L45s, L43s. And then when we look at control logics, we got 75s, 74s. Oops. Come back down here. So you get 72s, 73s, 74s, and 75s. So now you can program all the new processors as well with 19 if you bought a newer processor. Okay. And inside that, it looks exactly the same. If you go to your help, you say about, you'll see that this is licensed to whatever username you put in, whatever company name you put in, serial number, the activation, and the product prefix. Everything's activated. And we have, let me start a new project. Well, here, let's open this up. Let's open up our old program we used to program this earlier, the demo program. It's opening up the program, so it's moving slowly. Okay. If I come down to tasks right here, and I got main program, okay, I can go here and I can say new routine. Click on my main program, just like you got main routine. I can say as that was our ladder diagram right there, right? This is our ladder diagram. If I go to main program, right click and say new routine, you'll see I can pick out what kind of routine I want. I want sequential function chart, function blocks diagram, structured text. So I can program in any of these languages and any combination of these languages. Uh, there's no use me showing you how to program in these. If, if you go to TW Controls uh, on YouTube, this guy actually teaches this for a living. And uh, he has a really good demo, and he has a good camera where you can see everything that's going on and what the equipment looks like. And uh, we have a link to his website on our website, thelearncontrols.com slash plchtm. Uh, there's a link to it on the index page when you first your, your home page there's a link to the PLC page as well um, but you can click on there and go to his site and he has all kind of lessons um, I'll work on some the more advanced stuff a little bit later but all the basics go to him and learn them it, it's just really easy to learn uh, I'll cover HMI interfaces and how that works um, and uh, I might look at some of the advanced stuff, but the PIDE control and all this, he'll show you how everything works. He's really good at it. Okay, we'll just cancel this. And, well, I'll show you if, if we did want it to say new and we wanted a function block, we would put function block diagram and we say name and we'll call it uh, main. I don't know. A main F function block diagram, FDF, FBD. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. Okay, and we say okay. 
And now you see we've got a function block right here. We've got our main routine, which is our ladder. We click here and we'll get a function block. All right. And now you see our menus change. Now it's, it's function blocks and adds, subtracts, multiplies, divides. And this is and, Boolean and. We've got a process, we've got alarms, scale command, PIDE. This is uh, internal model control. It, it only handles two elements. And here's coordinated control. Um, you got drives. Um, so you can do anything you want in this function block. Uh, we might do something with that later, like scale command. Um, you can use the scale command. And again, uh, TW controls will show you how to use the scale command. You can either calculate with a calc block in the ladder diagram to scale your digital um, bit count of your analog to digital converter for your analog cards. He'll show you how to scale that count into a 0 to 100 percent or a, a 0 to 23 feet or um, maybe you got a flow 0 to 200 gallons a minute. He'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's nice me wasting my time. Okay, that's it. We're set up. 19 is ready to go. Um, next, I'm going to work on if you want to add the uh, networks, and then I'll get into the HMIs. Okay, that's it. Bye.